That's what leftism is dragging people back into, whether it realizes it's doing it or not. The people that believe in moral truth, this is the fight that we are tasked with, guys. We're not just fighting a political ideology. We're not fighting to get to the next election and get people that we like in office and get policies that we like enacted. That's not what we're fighting here. This is a spiritual battle for the soul of this country. Hey, fellow tacticians. Be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell. That supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. Pew Research actually did a survey, and they found out that white liberals were more likely to have mental illness. I, I swear, this is a real thing. I didn't believe the headline when I saw it, but you can see it right here. This is an excerpt from a... Uh, from, from I'm sorry, this is a graph from the Pew Research Center. And so you can see there, these are the people that have ever had a healthcare provider told them that they had a mental health condition. So this is, this is not just an opinion, this is people that have actually been diagnosed. And you can see there that it's, it's certainly higher amongst younger people. And it's also, and we'll get into this a little bit later, it's also highest amongst females who happen to be represented in blue. Now, why the females are represented in blue and the males are represented by that, like, um, harsh pink, I, I don't know. It seems kind of like it should be the opposite to me, but whatever. But yeah, this is a, a trend that was taken uh, in 2020, and they just released the findings of it. And as you can see, over on the left side, white liberals have by far, it's not even close, the highest degree of mental health issues it's a little bit lower for white moderates, and then it's lower still for white conservatives. In fact, if you're um, if you're looking at all of that with white liberals, the average is about 42. With white moderates, it's about 26, and with white conservatives, it's about 21. Now, I find that fascinating for a number of reasons. First of all, it's interesting to me that white conservatives are even lower than white moderates, but that both wind up in about the same ballpark, whereas when you have liberals, they have a ridiculous explosion of mental illness. Now, here's the thing. There are a lot of conservative talk shows that are going to look at this stat, look at the story, and they're going to use it as an opportunity to dunk on liberals, basically making the case that, see how screwed up liberalism is? It attracts the crazies. There's probably some measure of that. I'm not saying that there's not. But honestly, I think that that's, that's staying really shallow. If we really want to dig into why this is the case, I think it's the opposite. I think what they're doing there is committing a cause and effect fallacy. Are there crazy people that are attracted to leftism? Oh yeah, absolutely. Are there crazy people attracted to conservatism? Yeah, that's also true. We've, we've got our crazies too. And I would guess that liberalism probably lends itself to that a little bit more just because liberalism by definition is, is more about just do whatever you want. But I think that they're committing a cause and effect fallacy, at least for the most part when they say that. See, I don't think that white liberals have a higher rate of mental illness and, and mental issues because of that. I, I think it's the opposite. I think that being a leftist over time drags you down into mental illness. And, and follow my logic on this, because feel free to disagree, but I think that I'm onto something here. This would be a great opportunity to own the libs, but I, I just think that What's actually going on here is that what you're actually seeing is that their worldview creates mental illness. It lends itself to that. People that are engrossed in the ideas of secularism, of nihilism, of moral relativism, that those people are naturally vulnerable to developing mental illness. I think it's actually liberalism causing the mental illness, not the other way around. And my rationale for that basically goes to this. What is the most common theme of mental illness? What does virtually every mental illness from every side of the spectrum have in common? They have trouble perceiving reality. All of them. Whether you're talking about somebody that's delusional, whether you're talking about somebody that is paranoid, whether you're talking about somebody that even has obsessive compulsive disorder. They perceive things that are incorrect that are perfectly acceptable and fine. Schizophrenics have this issue. They're, they're seeing things that aren't actually there. 
people with multiple personalities, they think that they're more than one person. People with transgenderism, gender dysphoria, they think that they're a gender that they're not. Body dysphoria, they see themselves as being in the wrong body. All of these things are something that we attribute to the left. And the reason for that is because they cannot perceive reality. They're perceiving something that is either not there or might be there, but is exaggerated in their own mind, whether it's importance or scope or whatever else it may be. All of these things are issues with dealing with reality. And that's the credo of leftism. Nothing matters. Everything's relative. There is no truth. You are whatever you feel. Well, if your feelings are your only, only standard, then what if your feelings are wrong? What if your feelings are off? What if your feelings tell you to do something that wind up causing you pain in the end? You see, a, an objective moral truth would tell you that if you're doing something that is incorrect or causing you pain, you need to stop that even if it's uncomfortable for you at the time, or even if it's going to be very difficult for you at the time. Liberalism does none of that. It says you do you however you want without some kind of structure or an anchor to ground yourself in reality, you wind up with stuff like this. L let's take a look at it from a different angle. Let's say that you're a, a young liberal, because remember, the younger you were, the more likely you were to have these health issues, uh, the, these mental health issues, according to that chart. Let's say that you're looking at the world, you see how terrible it is, you see how awful people are to one another, and you think that this is the only thing that exists, that there is no heaven, there is no hell, there is no greater power to uh, present justice, to judge mankind, that the, the evil people that are getting away with it, they're just going to continue to get away with it, and their existence is, is actually significantly superior, because your only measure is how successful they are on this side of eternity, to the people that are actually doing the right thing and, and trying to make it in this world, and, and playing by the rules to do so. Well, don't you think that would drive you to anxiety? Don't you think that would drive you to believe that everything's pointless? Wouldn't that depress you? That's what's going on here. I don't think it's that those people are drawn to liberalism. I think it's that liberalism creates those problems. When you have a secular worldview that is devoid of all objective moral truth, then all you've got is trying to create a utopia. And once you realize that you as an individual... Because remember, the left does not value individualism. They think of everyone as a collective. When you see salvation as only coming through society and through government, and you see that that never comes, that it never delivers on its promise, and you start to worry that, oh, that might never happen because of all these evil conservatives that are constantly getting in the way of it. When you put your trust in that, of course it's going to cause anxiety. Of course it's going to cause that. You think that the world is going to, as AOC would say, is like literally going to end in like 12 years. Well, if you think that, then of course you're anxious. You think the whole world is going to be destroyed and there's nothing awaiting you on the other side of eternity. Now, Christians believe the world could be destroyed at any second. But you know why we're not anxious about it? Because the ones that are Christians and are faithful know that they're, the, the end of that is going to be a place significantly better than this world. And so you understand once you start peeling back the worldview how this could lead to all kinds of mental health issues and the reason that this is taking place because when you are a utopianist and you believe that what's supposed to happen to humanity is we're go eventually going to reach a utopia if we just have a, a communist world where everybody shares everything and there is no property and these, these evil heartless Republicans are the ones poisoning that and there's nothing I can personally do to stop it. Well, of course you feel hopeless. There is no hope in that worldview. And so I think that that's the reason that this is happening. And because there is no higher power, ultimately everything is just meaningless. So let's say that you could create your utopia. Let's say that you actually accomplish your goal, that all Republicans are, you know, murdered by Joseph Stalin or something like that. I'm, I'm giving, you know, being a little facetious, but I'm just saying that let's say that those evil Republicans that are stopping your perfect world from being created, let's say that they all went away and you could create your utopia. And let's just pretend that that would actually work even though every time it's ever been tried in human history, it wound up in just murdering lots of people for no reason. But let's pretend that it actually worked and you accomplished your utopia. So? I mean, gold star for you, I guess, but if life has no meaning, what was the point? Even if you create your utopia, 
the universe is eventually going to end. All the people that live in it are eventually going to die. So what was the point? You see how undermining that biblical Judeo-Christian worldview creates a society and creates a mental state where people would be prone to these things? Even if they accomplish their goal, how would they even know that their goal is good and noble? If there is no objective truth, who's to say that their world is significantly better than another socialist, Hitler's worldview? Why is their world better than his world? Well, I mean, if there is no objective truth, how can you tell that? It's just a personal preference. And so, this is the issue that you run into if there is no moral truth. And another thing, too, that I, I think we need to understand about this when we look at the other side of this equation. God created us to be a certain way. He created us. In other words, he designed us specifically with a purpose and a way of life in mind for us. There is something that he perceived and he wanted for us to have. That's how we're made. Think about it like this. If I were to design a framing hammer, so you've got your, your handle, your grip, and then your hammer head, and on the other side, your, you know, your apparatus to pull up the nails. All of those things have a purpose, and it's designed that way for a reason. What if a person decided to drive a nail by grabbing the hammer head and trying to smash down on the nail with the handle? I don't know, it might drive it a little bit in, but even if it works, it's going to be super crooked and unreliable because you're using the tool in the way in which it was not designed. And that's what a lot of the people with the secular worldview are missing about God. God designed us to live a certain way, to have hope and purpose and love. And all of those things really only come through a relationship with Him. We can kind of get the job done, just like banging on a nail with the hammer handle can kind of get the job done to some degree, but it's not going to work the way that it's supposed to because you're not using the tool in the manner in which it was designed. And human beings are no different. God designed us with a specific purpose to do specific things in a specific way. And when we ignore His will and when we use ourselves and our souls in ways in which He did not intend, mental illness is the natural result among lots of other terrible things. And so ultimately, this is where we wind up. We are designed to love God and to be loved by Him, and that gives our lives purpose and meaning. And devoid of that, we're going to develop mental health issues because we're not fulfilling that purpose. It's just as simple as that. And you know, I noticed in this chart that women are far more prone to this than men. Now, I don't know exactly why that is. So we're, we're diving off a little bit into speculation. And me being a non-woman, and no matter what people on the left may say, I, I'm not a woman, I've never been a woman, I can never become a woman, I will never, you know, no matter what my feelings are, I'll be a man and I'll, I will always be a man till the day I die. So the, the question becomes, why is it that women were more prone to this? I think it's because women need this more than men, because we are different, because we're not the same. Now, do all human beings need a loving God to protect them and look after them and to give their lives purpose? Yes, absolutely, that is true. Women don't need God more than men. I'm not saying that, so I want to clear that right now. But what I am saying is, Women do need the relationship aspect of it more than men. Because women have a greater need to be loved and to feel loved. And that's very difficult to do in a world that is cruel and heartless and doesn't care about them. And so I think that having that secular worldview, I mean, it just amps it up to 11 if that's the case. And here's another thing that I think is part of it as well. The victim mentality plays a large role in that too. Because if you constantly believe that every single thing about our world is the product of the patriarchy and that women are just being oppressed and, and demonized and all of this stuff and, and, and basically all men exist just to keep women down, well, yeah, that's also going to cause some mental health issues. And so I think the combination of those two things are the reason that women have a bigger deal with this. And, and maybe some of my female viewers would love to weigh in on this and provide some insight that I just can't because I'm a dude. 
But that that's just tends to be where my thought process starts to try to explain exactly why women seem to be far more prone to that mental illness pro, uh, issue, especially when it comes to white liberals than men are. But here's the thing. I want everybody that's watching this that is not a liberal, that is a Christian conservative, or even somebody that's more of a platonic person. In other words, you're not necessarily religious, you're not really a Christian, but you understand objective moral truth because of the, the school of Socrates and Plato and Aristotle and that line of thinking. Either one of those two camps that you happen to be in, I want you to understand we are not fighting a political ideology, and I think that this study is proof of that. We are literally fighting against madness and darkness. We are fighting against the opposite of the Enlightenment period. We are fighting to regress back into secularist and, and paganist ideas. That nothing matters, that we can't really control our lives, that it's all about the collective and the tribe and, and the society at large, and you as an individual don't have rights and don't matter, and it's all about power and control. That's what leftism is dragging people back into, whether it realizes it's doing it or not. The people that believe in moral truth, this is the fight that we are tasked with, guys. We're not just fighting a political ideology. We're not fighting to get to the next election and get people that we like it, uh, in office and get policies that we like enacted. That's not what we're fighting here. This is a spiritual battle for the soul of this country. And we are fighting darkness and madness. And that chart just shows it is a visualization of exactly what's going on there. This is a sickness that is taking hold of us, an emptiness, a void that was created when we took God out of everything. And the only way to combat that is revival. That's it bringing God back into the sphere, giving people purpose and meaning and feeling like their lives actually matter to somebody. That's the only way we're going to come out on the other side of this. I hope we're up to the task. I really do. Because it is not going to be an easy battle. To convince you to like this video and subscribe to my channel, I'm about to do some political impersonations. First up, Bernie Sanders. It is immoral! that in this country, the top 1% of YouTubers get all the likes and subscriptions. John Kerry. Please remember to ring the notification bell. President Joe Biden. If you like the show, call the TV guide and tell them. You know, the thing. Kamala Harris. Batman would want you to like and subscribe. 